Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. I'm out here in my driveway instead of out back because it's a whole lot easier for me to show you this. It's the short range rifle target by shootsteel.com and it's designed for high volume training with 5.56 or 308 as close as 50 yards. They'll even warrant it to 25 yards, but they only recommend that for military and law enforcement customers because of the increased risk of getting spalling, getting jacketing sent back to you as a shooter. I'm going to show you exactly that and a whole lot more about this target coming up next on Twang and Bang. ShootSteel.com's short range rifle target was designed with portability in mind. It breaks down into three parts that easily fit in a range cart and go back together in seconds. The target face is 3 8 inch thick AR500 and it's about the size of the vitals in an adult male. It bolts directly to a bracket at a 30 degree angle which is what protects the steel from damage from short range rifle hits. It's not there to increase safety and I'll cover this more in detail later in the video. The kit also comes with a 20 inch long AR500 spall guard for the 2x4 that you supply yourself. All of the hardware is grade 8 steel which is extremely resistant to damage from bullet impacts. The base will hold the 2x4 on target with gravity alone but it does have two threaded holes if you want to lock the stand together with the supplied wing bolts. Though ShootSteel.com recommends a minimum distance of 50 yards for general use, the SRRT is rated for use as close as 25 yards. I'm going to start my testing at 30 yards to see how it goes before getting closer. Because the plate is hard mounted to the bracket, it doesn't ring. Instead, you get more of a slap. The rest of this round of testing, I'll shoot some on the steel and some into the berm so you can hear the difference. The sound of a hit seems easy enough to hear on an empty range with only one shooter. However, if you're running multiple targets and multiple shooters, I think you'll also be relying as much on seeing the puff of lead dust to confirm a hit as you will the sound. Repainting the target face every so often will also help as well as enable you to better pinpoint exactly where you're making your hits. So I put a box around this target because I want to see what the splash is like as I move in from 30 yards. ShootSteel.com told me that they rate this for hits within up to 25 yards with 308 and 556. However, they don't recommend it for people who aren't interested in getting hit by pieces of jacketing, that kind of thing. But I wanted to see at what point does the splash start to come towards the shooting line. And so I'm going to shoot through this box starting at 30 yards and work my way in checking the box every five yards or so to see where the splash is. Okay, I'm at 30 yards. I'm shooting 55 grain XM193. Okay, that was just five rounds at about 30 yards and I'm already getting some spalling that's coming out of the front of the box. You can see the holes one, two, three, four, five, and all of this is spalling. Some of that is pretty significant coming out of the box <laughs> towards me, towards the shooting line. And look at that. Wow. That's why you really want to be careful about how you have your steel angle because that is nasty. That's absolutely, absolutely nasty. You do not want to get hit with spalling. So I think from the results I've seen already, I feel safe using eye protection. 
at 25 yards shooting this with 556 five, I'm not gonna do 308 and I'm not gonna come in any closer than that just uh, it's not worth the risk to me besides if you're closer than 25 yards you're gonna be able to see where you're hitting on a cardboard target which is much better for that kind of thing <laughs> okay I got some pretty interesting results on that box already with just five shots at 25 yards they're the kind of results that I don't feel the need to get in any closer but I'm gonna finish I've got 16 more rounds in this mag and we're gonna see what we end up with I'm gonna try to move the hits around <laughs> as best I can remember where the plate is inside that box but let's see what we get after 21 full rounds on the steel And it looks like it's on fire. <laughs> so once again, you can see there's a lot of spalling that came back towards the shooter, towards me. And I tried to put the holes, the entry holes are obvious to see. And there's 21 on there, and I think every one of them hit the steel in there. But you can see <laughs> it just cut that box right open. And... Yeah, I don't see any exits at all on this at all. So I got all of them on steel. But again, that is why you want good steel. That's why you want to protect anything that's going to get hit by spalling close to your steel. And that's why you don't want to be anywhere you can get hit by spalling. 25 yards is it for 5.56. Now I'm going to shoot some subsonic 300 blackout. Shootsteel.com does not recommend shooting handgun ammo and its equivalent at angled steel, and you're about to hear why. Did you hear those two ricochets? Angled steel does not allow handgun velocity loads to fully spall on impact, and you'll get deflection instead of destruction of the bullets. Only shoot full power rifle loads at this target. All right, subsonic wasn't enough to get the bullets to fully spall, and we were getting some interesting ricochets off of the plate. Now I'm gonna try 115 grain UMC 300 blackout, see if that does better. Now that's more like it. I still want to test the steel with 308, but I'm going to do it at 50 yards. I'm shooting Hornady 168 grain boat tail hollow point from a 20 inch Remington 700 wearing a Liberty Victory suppressor. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> I had fun putting a smiley face on there, but there's no cratering at all. And that just goes to show you velocity is the enemy of steel. It's not kinetic energy because this is a lot more kinetic energy, but all of that, that's from the velocity of, of 5.56 five, at 25 yards. And you can see this is mainly just kind of powder, the spalling from the rounds going off. But there's a little bit more down on the, the stand than there was when I put it here. But it handled 308. No problem whatsoever at 50 yards. I found that really educational. It was really cool to see just how an angled target sends spalling a bunch of different ways. And what it showed me is beyond a doubt, Evan 
really knows what he's talking about when it comes to the proper use of steel. If you have an application that you're wondering what steel will work for you, call Evan. He's going to tell you what's going to work for you and what's not. He's not going to just try to sell you steel if it's not appropriate for your needs. The short range rifle target kit includes everything but the 2x4. Of course, you do need to be able to cut the 2x4 and drill it to mount the spall guard, but you can get it for $249. Right now, enter code TWANG and BANG to get 10% off the complete kit and everything else at ShootSteel.com all the way through November 17th, 2014. Of course, you could always check my Facebook page or ShootSteel.com's Facebook page to see if they're running any additional discounts if you're watching this later than that. But if you want to learn more about the short range rifle target from ShootSteel.com, I think you know where to click. If you like this video, please take the time to log in and click the like button. YouTube needs to know that you like firearms-oriented programming. If you want to help the channel even more, be sure to click up here so you can see how you can contribute to my Patreon campaign. Be sure to click up here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff like these short-range rifle targets. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.